Hello YouTube and welcome to our tutor Q&A for the um, Oxford Department of Engineering Open Days. I am Stephen, I am a gremlin and a student, um, currently in, just finished my second year of undergrad. The person somewhere left, right, up, down, not entirely sure, um, on the screen next to me, or possibly not yet, and you'll see him when he starts speaking, is Professor Antoine Jerusalem. He lectured one of my courses this year and is officially a professor of mechanical engineering, but does a weird and wonderful variety of things. So I'll let him introduce himself. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I'm, uh, I'm Antoine Jerusalem, professor of mechanical engineering. I'm also um, a tutor in, uh, in St. Hughes College. Um, and uh, my expertise branches from uh, materials engineering to computational mechanics. Uh, and I've been in Oxford for uh, eight to nine years now. Um, here we go. And we've got our first question already. Um, what is an Oxford tutorial like? I'll say scary, but what's it like from your side? So, um, uh, well, I mean, I'll ask you after what, what you think. But the, the way the way the way I un I understand uh, Oxford tutorials is um, essentially well. Maybe we should start with giving some background. Uh, essentially, when you uh, join uh, Oxford, you'll have uh, one tutorial in your college. Uh, of an hour uh, with one or two other uh, uh, colleagues of your cohort in the same college and a tutor. Um, and uh, you'll have one for every four hours of lecture you have. So you'll have a topic that you'll be taught in the department and then you'll spend some time uh, in the college um, uh, going over question sheets, problems that will be given to you. You're supposed to hand them over to uh, the tutor uh, a day or two before, and then discuss essentially any kind of, um, of problem you might have had while doing those questions. Um, I think it's fair to say that this is not a way for the tutor or the student to be to evaluate or be evaluated. It, it's really much about trying to make sure that you understand uh, how to solve the problem. It's not the final result that's important, it's the way you get there. And the tutor here is, is really here to help you achieve that. Uh, and not not really test you on this. Um, is, that, is that a fair assessment, Stephen? Yeah, I think they are. Yeah, that's pretty much on the nose. Um, I will add that your first one will be terrifying, and that's okay. Like you are in a room with one or two other people in your year for support and help. And you, but if there are two of you, you're spending half an hour. And especially tutorials are an hour. Some tutors go over, so sometimes you're spending kind of an hour and a half in a room. And 45 minutes of that is getting asked technical questions about engineering. And that's really, really hard. And I certainly felt like I was really struggling for my first tutorial, few tutorials. And then I realized that's what tutorials are supposed to be like, because it means you're learning so much. Um, and the amount I learn in tutorials, especially about the course, and then that just a little bit beyond it, just really picking up all those little extra bits that I think are easy to lose. Um, most of it gets examined, but not all of it does. And some of the coolest things I've learned in tutorials have been kind of my tutor who, I'm not going to name them, just going off on tangents, just being like, this won't be examinable, but look at how cool this is. And it's like, actually, I agree, that's cool. We're here because we love engineering. And sometimes it's just fun to run on a tangent for 10 minutes and just explore a weird bit of fluids that might not come up in exam. Um, I, I question, agree with that. Question number two, um, what is the acceptance rate onto the course? So how many people apply and then how many actually get interviews and then get in? Uh, so I think um, we, we have an intake of 177 students. Uh, we tend to interview, uh, uh, you know, roughly 40%, 41% of them. Uh, and then 16% are successful. Uh, I mean, this is over, I think, 2018, 2020, uh, roughly. Uh, so so it, essentially it means that... Uh, you know, 40% are being interviewed, then the, the, uh, the interview is really about uh, trying to understand you better. So it's not just about your UCAS form and your PAT score. It's about trying to uh, to figure out who you really are, how you think. And that's that's where the interview play, plays a role, right? Um, so that's, yeah, those are for the, the sheer numbers of, um, of the uh, of success rate. This is a question I'm very intrigued to hear the answer for. What part of the course do you think students find the most interesting? The most interesting, sorry, you said the? Most interesting. Interesting. Um, haha. 
so most more question for you, Stephen. So I'll, 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 I'll tell you what I think, and then you'll tell me if you agree or disagree, and you complement it with your, your own answer. But I think uh, the way the system is built in Oxford is that uh, whether you do labs or lectures or tutorials, or later on a third year project or a fourth year project doing research, you're looking at different aspects of engineering. They're all, they're all different in nature. They're the sheer knowledge, which is a lecture, the way you use it, which is the tutorial, the way you use it in, in very concrete situation, hands-on, which are the labs, uh, and then eventually the research. So I guess there's a bit for every, everyone, right? There's uh, people that, that do like understanding and uh, what's going on and are not really hands-on, uh, will potentially like the lectures better and the tutorials, whereas uh, people can potentially not really like the lectures and the tutorial, but end up loving the, for, the you know, fourth year project doing research. Uh, so I think it's a very personal, uh, um, uh, it's a very personal question. What, what do you think, Stephen? Yeah, I mean, I think you're on the nose. I've spent enough time answering Q&As over the last couple of days to realise that even though I have a personal hatred of fluid mechanics, that does not extend to the department. Um, and it's really just about what you get on with. So one of the great advantages of it being a general degree is you will enjoy, I reckon, 80 to 90 percent of the degree in your first and second year. And that's, that's what 80 to 90 percent of the degree I've absolutely loved. The other 10, 20 percent, I am really I'm not going to be honest, I'm looking forward to dropping, like not everything I've loved, but at the same time, I wouldn't have never have learned that fluid mechanics isn't for me if I hadn't had to sit through eight fluid mechanics lectures, if I hadn't had that content, if I hadn't had the ability to go, okay, I'm going to sink into the maths, I'm going to learn this, and I've gone, this is not for me, but equally some other people at my college have gone, yes, I love turbo machines, and they would never have realised if they had never been exposed to the content, so yeah, you love 80 to 90% of it, and the rest you just got to get through, and then you get to drop those modules. But you'll discover also, Stephen, because you're in second year, right? But you discover also that as you go through your option in third and fourth year and you start to kind of pick things that, uh, that, that do focus on aspects of, of you know, inter topics that you like better or at least you're interested in, whether it's mechanical engineering, AI, uh, you know, control, uh, you know, propulsion, whatever, you will discover that some of these basic building blocks that you got to see in first and second year take their, you know, have a value. So um, more than once I've, I've seen students uh, telling me, you know, I really didn't like this thing. Uh, and then when seeing how it applies in a given topic for a concrete uh, uh, situation, they discover that actually this thing that they didn't like now, they understood why it existed in the first place that how it was being used. And I wouldn't say that it turned into something that was absolutely fabulous for them, but they realized that actually this was not only needed, but it was something that, that was uh, um, helping them better understand and appreciate uh, the application of, of the topic, right? You, you are probably right, Professor. Well, you, you'll tell me. I, I, will, I will reserve that for two years and then I'll tell you whether you were. Excellent. What are kind of three really common mistakes you notice in kind of first year students when they transition from school ah. to uni. So what do we all get wrong in first term? Uh, uh, the first thing is to think that it's a competition. Uh, you know, everybody that gets to, to Oxford, uh, you know, demonstrated, you know, that they're, you know, they're very good in different topics and, you know, they can sustain the course, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But this is not a competition anymore. Now it's about learning a lot of things in not uh, a lot of time. And it doesn't matter whether, you know, Mary or Bob is doing better or worse. Uh, the important thing is uh, that you personally learn more stuff. And as a matter of fact, you're not evaluated depending on the ranking, you're evaluated depending on an absolute uh, grade. Um, so it's not a competition. Um, the second mistake is to saying that uh, you can work on your own. Uh, actually, no, uh, and uh, we discussed that also yesterday. Um, what I tend to tell my, my student in, in, in our college is that when they join, the cohort of students that do best in the college are the ones that are working well together, that are, are, are you know, creating a small community. 
you know, it might be three students, it might be six students, it might be 12 students, it depends on the college, but it also means that if those N students work well together, uh, they will do better. And as a matter of fact, you know, uh, uh, Stephen might not like uh, fluid mechanics and not be good at it, but Mary might do better or Bob might do better. But on the other hand, Stephen would be better at mechanical engineering and then Mary and Bob will not be better at mechanical engineering. So working together help essentially as a cohort uh, uh, learning best. Uh, so that's for the second uh, um, mistake. Um, I'd say the third mistake, um, you, you tell me if you agree, Stephen, is to think that, um, uh, so when you come back, so I think it's, it's, it's probably more of an insider um, type of comment, but when you come back after the first break in Christmas, you have an, um, a series of, of fake exams that are called collections. Uh, and they cover essentially, they're aimed at making you sure that you understood properly the, the first um, uh, materials. And the, the mistake I see quite often is when you come back and you think that by just rereading the, the, the courses very quickly, you'll be able to have a good grade at collection. It generally doesn't happen. Um, so those are the three early mistakes I'd say I, I see in students. Uh, is, that, is, that, is that a fair assessment, Stephen? Do, do you agree yeah. with that? I think that's that's completely on the nose and something I'll add just because everyone's been in the lockdown is that's the second one's probably been the hardest thing I found about second year. Of course, yeah. of no ones, but like my first two terms were really great. I mean, a cohort of four, we all spent a lot of time in the library until kind of the end of, we call it Hillary term. It's basically second term when Easter starts um, and then lockdown hit. And since then, I've been on Zoom. I've been online. I haven't spent basically any time in a room with them working. And it's made all of that interaction so much harder. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't really believe it. Like, I always got told, yeah, you should work in a team. And then we did for two terms. Because I was like, well, my professors, my professors have told me to, so I will. And then I was like, oh, it's so much harder when I'm stuck in my bedroom and doing things on my own. And actually, it made me realize that actually you were right. You generally are. Um, not always, but uh, in, in, in this case, I mean, I've seen it. It's just, it's more of the sheer number, right? I've been here eight, nine years. There are cohort of students that all work individually and there are cohort that are just buddies and spend all the time together, uh, which is not necessarily sane either, but there's probably a balance at some point. Uh, and but generally those that work together indeed perform better. Uh, as opposed to work on your so yeah. with the obviously with the lockdown there's been a, you know it's been challenging uh, clearly uh, but even then we've been kind of encouraging students to to liaise even through zoom or teams uh, within the cohort to try to kind of work together so uh, yeah those are the three common mistakes I think I cannot wait to get into an to get into a lecture hall again in third year don't know when it will be but I'm hoping to get back into one at some point um, how do you specialize into kind of certain areas of engineering within the degree? So e.g. chemical. So, uh, well, we touched a bit upon this earlier and that came a lot as a question in the tutorial q and is that, so this is a course of general engineering, right? So you're being taught a lot of topics and, and uh, a lot of things. Um, now, as you learn about these different things, you might develop an appetite. Or it might be that you already have made up your mind at the start uh, for one topic or another. Um, and in third and particularly fourth year, you get to pick options uh, that starts giving you uh, lectures in the topic that you've chosen, right? And uh, sometimes that just helps you realize that this thing is not for you, right? And there's nothing wrong about it. So you, you try something, you don't like it. But that gives you essentially some kind of menu which I find it very exciting if I, at least if I were a student to be able to choose about things that you'd like to learn more about instead of being taught the building blocks of first and second year, right? So it's essentially third, fourth year that, that you start getting into the specialization. And honestly, it's really, really nice to have a general course because I came in thinking I'm going to do civil, civil engineering and I'm choosing my options tomorrow and none of them are going to be civil engineering. Um, because I discovered what it was actually like. And it's like, oh, this isn't nearly as much for me as I, what I thought it was going to be. Um, from your perspective, Professor, what are the main differences between colleges? Like, are there certain colleges that are good for certain specialisms or? So, so this is a question that comes, comes back often. The, the other question that comes back is, which is the closest college to the department? 
Um, or people have been asking about library. Uh, I'm surprised nobody's asking about the food also in the different colleges, which I think it should be important. But uh, all in all, when, when all considered, and also with the benefit of, of insight, um, different colleges have different cultures and community. And there's no right or wrong. There's no better or worse. Uh, but you might realize that you fit better in, in, in the his, with, when looking at the history of one college with respect to another one, or you're more excited about the opportunity of one college with respect to the other one. Um, it is obviously not always easy because unless you're an insider or you manage to do a lot of research, you don't necessarily know that. And as a matter of fact, you're not necessarily asked to pick a college when you apply, right? This could be decided uh, for you. Um, but I'd say it's, it, is, it, it should not be based on which type of engineering you want to do, right? Because you have different tutors uh, and frankly, some might leave, some might come back. Uh, some might uh, be here when you apply and be in another college and another with another title uh, the next year. Um, so I, I wouldn't think that should be, you know, um, in, there's a difference in terms of engineering by, by colleges. Um, so this is that, Stephen, you're, you're, you're in St. Anne's, which, which has a, a different history than, I don't know, Modland, for example. Um, uh, do you, how do you feel you belong uh, or not uh, to St. Anne's? Uh, what was, what's your view on, on, the, on the college? So, so I, I applied for St. Anne's um, and I got in. I still can't quite work out if I was the, so I was the only engineering applicant I saw throughout my entire interview process. It was really weird. Like I got to Anne's and they're like, where are the other engineering students? Um, but and amusingly, I'm the only person in my cohort who actually applied to ANS. Everyone else just got kind of pulled in. And it was it's a really great college. Like I love it. We're three minutes from the department. The food is glorious. I love the food. Um, and from a teaching standpoint, every Oxford professor is capable of teaching the first two years, pretty much regardless of course, to be honest. Sometimes they give away some of the second year courses to PhD students or grad students who know a little bit more about things. And then once you get into third year, it's all done by the department anyway. So I'm going to do some electrical modules next year. And I might not necessarily have tutors from St. Anne's for that. And that's great because it means I'm learning from kind of the wild leads in that field. I'm almost certainly not going to have one of my um, professors because he's a fluid, he's a fluid dynamics um, kind of engineer, fluids and thermo, and that's his thing. And that's not my thing. So I know I'm unlikely to see him in a... Um, tutorial again and it's like well that's okay he's taught me really well he taught me everything he knew about well no he taught me a lot of what he knew about fluids and he didn't teach me a lot else because he's incredibly right and it's just yeah it's amazing to see how far she's occasionally i get a glimpse and he just mentions something very offhand which is like isn't that like a fourth year and it's just like oh you're really smart um is it possible to volunteer as research assistants to assigned tutors either during the semester or during kind of vacations? I know there's a Europe, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, uh, a Europe, um, uh, which is a term that's also being used in, in the US actually. Essentially that's, that's a, a research uh, summer internship uh, and there's some funding uh, in the department uh, for this. And uh, uh, quite often, obviously, it makes sense for uh, a student that's very excited about the research of one of the tutors uh, in the dip, in the um, in the college to kind of try to do that, but it doesn't have to be with the tutor of your college. Uh, you might you might find that you're very excited about you know professor whatever and what he or she is doing, uh, and and you, you can do that. Uh, so there there are there are quite a lot of opportunities. There's obviously the fourth year project also where you get to spend uh, over the course of, of the entire year to do research almost part-time, essentially, on top of your lectures um, uh, with uh, another academic. Uh, so there are, there are a lot of opportunities for, for, for research. Um, and you know, all, the, all the teaching, well, the vast majority of the, of the teacher uh, is in college or department are doing research one way or another. Um, and we all, we all, uh, there's nothing better for us than being asked, even during the, the course of a tutorial, uh, something about our own research. Um, as you say, Stephen, no one go on a tangent on something that, that's just, just like, and then you end up realizing that you're talking research instead of, of covering the material. But that, you know, that's what excites us. So uh, there will be opportunity, essentially, that's the answer. 
kind of in the very same vein how do you choose um fourth year projects or end degree projects do how how many of the projects do we come up with and then kind of how many of them are department led as it were so the process is done by uh within the department so essentially all academics over towards the the in this during the second third term are being asked to provide a set of, of projects that they'd like to cover um the follow, for the following year uh uh, this is the, the department makes sure that there are projects in excess of the number of students. So that there's a wide variety of projects. There'll be cases where many students want the same project and there, there's some kind of, of, uh, of system that maximize your choice depending because you'll have to go with the first or second and third choice, I believe. Uh, Stephen, uh, you'll have to do that ne next year. Um, um, and essentially, you you end up being assigned a, a project at the start of the summer. Uh, generally, you get in touch with the uh, supervisor to try to see if there's some reading to be done, so that you can essentially touch the ground running once you come back end of September or the October. Um, so that's that's really the the process. There's also opportunity for students to reach out and then design a project um, with uh, the academic. Uh, which can then be uh, uh, looked at all together. Um, so there's, it, it's quite flexible. Uh, I think you, you'll have opportunity to, to choose something that you're interested in. You might have to have a third, second choice, but you know, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of projects going on. So we don't worry too much about it. This is interesting. I mean, that you We've got the question, how does engineering differ from other similar courses? I'm going to specify it, physics. Well, I think it's at the same time a very subjective and very objective question, I think. Um, uh, for some people, engineering is the ability of fixing their bike, right? That could just be that. And for some people, that's the ability of coming up with a new design of engine for a new type of airplane. Um, and I think that, that that's what it's all about. At the end, it's to have the ability of, of making a direct impact in the world with something you come up with. I think that, uh, that, that that's what it means. It might mean, it will mean using concept in physics and math, uh, uh, but you try to uh, uh, you, you try to do this probably in the shorter term. I mean, you could argue that physics also has an impact uh, in the world, but uh, um, I, I wouldn't say that it is done in the same way as engineering. I think engineering is, is the love for doing something new that the society is going to be able to use uh, in an innovative way. Um, Stephen, I mean, again, again, that's my view of it, but you might have a, a different approach to it. Yeah, I, I think you've talked about that better than I could express it. it. Is physics goes on to ask why for the sake of it. Engineering, you get to a point where you kind of go, okay, enough is enough. Now let's get this into the real world. And it's just where you draw that line. Engineering draws it relatively early on. Maths never draws it. And eventually you get to philosophy, which is kind of continuing to ask why. And that's the entire degree. It's just kind of going why and then thinking about it. Um, and where you draw that line is really personal. Obviously, everyone here thinks engineering gets it right. Um, how much time do you recommend students spend working? And then how much time do you recommend students spend working kind of outside of classes and lectures and labs? That's, it's a very different, I mean, there's no magic number. Uh, each person works differently. Um, some people would tell you, you need 10 hours for a question sheet. I've definitely heard that number quite a lot, um, but it's true that uh, people might spend more time, uh, not necessarily because they're slower, but because they actually want to understand everything that there is to understand about it. Uh, some people would take less time because they're very good at it and understood everything already. Um, uh, I don't think at, at the end of the road, it's all about understanding what you're doing. And if that goal is achieved, I think the purpose of the question sheet uh, is achieved. Um, for revision, uh, 
that's another story. A revision is about uh, normally preparing for an exam. Uh, so that means you're going to have to put the hours you need to put. And, and quite often, uh, it means working because between what we call Hillary and Trinity, which are the second and third term, um, towards that. Uh, and, and same thing. People, you know, I used to be a very slow student. I needed to read stuff. I had photographic memory uh, to kind of see again the same pages over and over and over to kind of remember what was in it. Um, some people go like that, uh, but need to practice a lot. It's very personal. Uh, Stephen, in your case, how, how do you personally uh, um, do your revisions or sheets? What, what's your, what's yeah, your I, I think question? I think that the 10 hours of revision sheet is possible, 10 hours per problem sheet is quite misleading. Like it probably averages out to be about 10. But yeah, yeah you're so, yeah. you're kind of right. That's kind of a weird curve. Like I reckon the the middle ones take me six or seven hours. The ones that are really hard, so the fluids, they'll take me 15, 16. And oddly, the electronics, stuff I really love, takes me kind of 10, 15, 16, because yeah, I'm in the library, I'm reading beyond it, I'm kind of going, but why? Um so yeah, even though it probably averages out to 10, it's very dependent on the week. It's very dependent on the course load. Some of that I can predict. Some of that I can look at my lectures. I can look at the start of term. I can kind of go, oh, week four is going to be rough. Week six is going to be easy. And that's useful just for planning, you know, my social life and other events. And then some of it is a bit unexpected where I kind of go, oh, yeah, that lecture course looks okay. And then I get there. I'm just like, this is not okay. Or vice versa. I kind of prepare myself for the worst. And then I see something that's like, oh, this is actually pretty doable. Um, so, yeah, you can kind of have an idea of exactly what your term is going to look like when the lectures get released at the start of term or when the lecture timetable gets released, I should say. I, th I think the, the important thing is not so much the number of hours, is the planning. So, so I think what makes a, a student do well is planning your weeks such that knowing that you'll have a tutorial that day, you need to start working now on that sheet, that you'd have the lecture coming on Friday, so you can start working on that other sheet so that during the weekend you wrap it up. Um, uh, what doesn't work is to start working the day before, thinking that you'll put the all-nighter on it and, and that's it. Because at the end, you need, if the, the better you organize your weeks, uh, the better you can also organize doing other things, which will help you have a nice, you know, health. Uh, balance so you want to also do some sport if you like sport you want to play video games if you like playing video games and you need to do that so that you don't always work either so it, it is a balance but getting this balance in in the demanding um, uh, environment that is oxford means planning essentially i think do we have time for last questions yeah you? i think can we sneak in the last question um what do you look for in a prospective student Huh. So, and, and that I think that that really is why the interviews uh, are helpful. Is that uh, one a question I? It is a difficult question also because because tutor might have different answers. So I'll, I'll I'll give my answer, but I wouldn't take that as the ground truth here. But uh, what? What I want is a curiosity more than anything else. So um, if you have somebody uh, that is extremely smart, but just takes everything as, uh, all right, done, 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 and that's it. I've been asked to do that, I provided that, you know, great. But from a teaching perspective, it's not very rewarding. Um, uh, other than that, what I actually enjoy is to uh, go on a tangent, as you say. So you start on the problem and then questions start flowing both ways, by the way, because it's a discussion uh, about the topics. And, and then you end up actually learning by just discussing. And questions come my way that I don't know how to answer. So I start scratching my head and we, we start you know, solving the problem together. This is, this is what excites me as a, as a teacher. Um, so I mean that that would be that would essentially be my um, my my answer. Yeah, I mean that the, the interview process is hard and it is stressful. And actually, I'm gonna quote my other half. We didn't actually get into Oxford. Um, 
But what she said to me kind of coming out after interviews was that that was the moment that she realized she wanted to go to Oxford. And she had kind of gone through the application process she was supposed to, but just being in that room for 20 minutes and just talking to someone who's incredibly knowledgeable and having that conversation, that was the point at which she went, oh, I really want to study here. And unfortunately, that's a bit late. Um, I think I think that's, well, the question didn't come up here. It came yesterday, but that's, that's the interview is also, I mean, if we were to, to go the extra minute above, uh, you know, after the deadline of 2.30, uh, I would add that though, is that the interview is is about having a discussion is about talking about a problem uh, and and thinking aloud what you'd like to do what tools you need to solve that that problem it's not about giving the solution uh, but giving the solution it's not you know here is the question and the answer is seven no it's how you get to this seven um and and i think to some extent the interview tries to emulate what will should happen in, in a tutorial um and then yeah so that, that I think that that was worth um, saying. I think we're we're rich our time. Yeah, there, um, there, there are a few questions left which we'll answer in the text boxes after the event. Thank you so much. In true Oxford tutorial fashion, we've gone over length. Um, do you have minute, though, any, anything else to add, Professor? No, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stephen, for for um, for your time here. And uh, I'm personally looking forward to uh, seeing potentially some of you in. Um, uh, in the interview process. Thank you very much for coming to the Q&A.